everyone in this video we're going to be solving a radical diophantine equation diophantine equations are fun and radical diophantine equations are even more fun so we have x and y as integers and we have the square root of x plus the square root of y equals the square root of 1976 this problem appeared on a math competition in 1976 but i can't remember which one because I wrote this a while ago and it just showed up and I thought this might be a good problem to solve. So we're going to be using some ideas from number theory, especially prime factorization, you know, factors and perfect squares and stuff like that. So let's get started. You could definitely try to factor 1976, which is something we're going to do later on and try to guess the solution, which could be a method. I'll be showing uh, two approaches, basically, here. Let's go ahead and start with the first one. So my first approach is going to be isolating one of the radicals and then squaring both sides, because why not, right? Whenever you have a radical, you want to get rid of them as, get rid of them as much as possible. This will do it. Uh, on the left, we're going to have x, and on the right-hand side, we're kind of factoring or squaring a difference. So a squared, b squared minus 2 a and b, right? Okay. We can go ahead and I probably messed up somewhere. Oh, yeah, one of these should be a y. Okay, I'm like, what? <laughs> x don't cancel out. No way. So this is a y, and this should be a y as well. And this should be a y as well. Great. So this is a y and this is a y. Now, we can go ahead and put these two radicals together. Like this, which will be helpful. Because that's the critical part. Most critical part is about the radical here, okay? So focus on the radical. Now, notice that this is an integer. This is an integer. This is an integer. So this needs to be an integer as well, right? Okay. How can that be an integer? Well, if the expression inside is a perfect square, then it'll be an integer. So we could kind of set it equal to maybe z squared, and that'll do the trick, okay? But how can I make that thing a perfect square? Let's find out. So the critical part here is identifying the radical as being an integer and then turning into a perfect square. And the next step would be to look at the prime factors. So we're gonna go ahead and prime, do the prime factorization on 1,976. First of all, notice that it's divisible by two and it's two times 988. And 988 is two times 494. And then 494 is also divisible by 2. I think it is 2 times 247. Here's the critical part. Is 247 a prime number? You can definitely check out. 2 is not divisible by 2. 3 is not. 5, nope. 7, nope. 11, nope. Those are very easy to check, by the way, right? Really visually. And then 13 is the next one you need to check. Okay. You may or may not know, but here's what I would check real quick. 247 is 260 minus 13. Both of these numbers are divisible by 13. Yes, 247 is a multiple of 13. And because it ends in 7, you probably guessed it if you said 13 times 19. You could just do prime factorization however you want. It's not too hard, right? Now, what do you do with that information? You're going to go ahead and plug it in here. Okay? So now we have 2 to the third times 13 times 19. I want to write the exponents. Times y equals z squared. By the way, if these are looking like x and that kind of bothers you like me, then we can go ahead and turn them into dots. Just use the dot symbol, which is something that I like better. So here we go. Okay. Now, if you want z squared to be a perfect square, then we need to multiply this expression by at least a 2, because that'll make it a 2 to the 4th power, times a 13, times a 19. Why? Because that'll make z squared 
equal to 2 to the 4th times 13 squared times 19 squared, which is a perfect square. But why go by the minimum? Like you could still add another, I don't know, t squared to this. t doesn't have to be 1, and you could still get a perfect square. The problem with that, if you make the y too large, then square root of x needs to be negative because their sum is constant or the sum of their radicals, square root, whatever. So you want to keep it small. Make sense? So we're going to keep it at that. So that's the y value. Let's find out what that is. You probably know. This is 247. If you multiply by 2, y becomes 494. Wait a minute. If y is 494, what is x? I mean, you can just plug it in, right? We had an equation, didn't we? Uh, well, we had this equation. Let's find out. First of all, notice that this is 4 times 494. Therefore, it can be written as 2 times 494. And if y is 494, by subtraction, you also find that x is 494. In other words, 494, 494 is a solution. And if you're looking for positive integers, that is the only solution. Right? Can you find another one? I don't think so. But why did I say the only positive solution? The problem didn't say positive integers. It just said integers, right? Did I? Did it? Something like that. But here's the thing. If you think about the trivial case, you should always think about those, unless otherwise stated. What happens if x is 0, right? This totally disappears. And y ends up being 1,976, and x becomes 0. And vice versa. Of course, they can always switch around because this is a switchable equation. I don't know if that makes sense, but it means that it's symmetrical, so you can basically come up with these ordered pairs. Now we're going to check our answers against Wolfram Alpha at the end so we can see if we are missing any solutions or if Wolfram Alpha was able to find all the solutions we found. It goes both ways, right? Obviously. Okay. Sorry about the noise. If you can hear it, it's kind of like a muscle car that we have them on the street. Um, anyways, so those seem to be the solutions. Let's go ahead and take a look at the second method, because I think the second method is pretty cool. I kind of maybe mentioned it uh, subtly a little bit. I don't know if you noticed, but when we did the factorization on this one, remember we wrote it as two times square root of 494, right? Well, two times the square root of 494 can be written as the square root of 494 plus the same thing, right? So that means, yes, x and y can be equal to those values and we'll get a solution. That's kind of like a cheap solution. I know it's not like really rigorous, but kind of like guess and check, or maybe, I don't know. But again, x equals zero will also work. And the fact that this can't be, you can't take out another perfect square from here, which means this is pretty much in the simplest form. I mean, this is two times 247, but this doesn't help. Two is not a perfect square, so we're kind of stuck, meaning that x and y cannot be anything besides these. Of course, I'm talking about the positive case. And of course, x equals 0 or y equals 0 always holds. Okay? And let's check Wolfram Alpha and then we'll finish up. All right, what does Wolfram Alpha say? Drum roll. Ta-da. Da -da -da -da. Over the integers. Look at that. I didn't say positive integers. So my prompt cannot be blamed for this. Unfortunately, Wolfram Alpha can only find 0 and 1,970. I don't know why I can't find... 494 or did we make a mistake let us know in the comment section and this brings us to the end of this video thank you for watching i hope you enjoyed it please let me know don't forget to comment like and subscribe i'll see you next time with another video until then be safe take care and bye bye